diving or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, I can also answer any questions <laughs> with that as well as uh, Step N and the, the Binance side of things. Alrighty, probably just for everyone listening in as well. Yes, so um, Gundiver, definitely, uh, that, that's something that, you know, like um, we are seeing, I, I want to be out there, and this isn't me just trying to plug a mate to, to get him kicking in the socials. In a month's time, he's going to go back to his cob out on the Great Barrier Reef, but this has been a great way for us to have reconnected, like you said. We've got not just one of us, there's half a dozen of us, probably a few more, um, getting into the game. And it's been a great way. We're all 42 years old. Most of us are 42. Some are struggling, 41, 43 differences. But this is what constitutes a game for us at the moment is that physical fitness. And it's, it's absolutely massive. And we talk about sneakers all day long. We look at them um, and all of that. And we're, we're talking and discussing. Eventually, we're going to need to play a game. We are mad World of Warcraft nutters and have been our whole life. You know, it came out in our early 20s. And um, you, we played again in, in vanilla, and so we played again in classic. Um, I'm just listening to Gundiver. What's, what's this mean? What's this mean? Um, and we are now playing this very, very heavily. The guys are all in different levels, and it's really, really awesome. So it's a game. The social buy element is absolutely there. A lot of the time, you're walking by yourself. And I alluded and I talked about live events with um, Gundiver came down with us to Adelaide in South Australia, and there was Yawn, there was Jason Price, the other Australian ambassador, Bryn from um, Runners One, who helped do do the event, and he'll help us with the Sydney and the Melbourne event. These live events are a huge part of the game. But there's a lot of stuff with Step N now, having gone into Binance, and a lot of people don't understand. To me, it's the same game. It's it's different, but it's the same. So it's the same game. It's the same app. It's just. over it but I wanted to have a, a live element where I come on to Binance, talk to you guys here, um, see what questions you have. I then want to have crowd questions and a lot of the questions that I could probably answer very quickly um, will take from the floor as well because I like this people person element of it. I like talking to people and experiencing the journey along with them. So the very basics to the Binance side of it is you can create the wallet in app or you can link to an existing wallet. You're gonna to need to have BNB as gas. And then of course you move an asset from your wallet, whether it's an asset someone has sent you, a friend has given you, anything like that, or your Binance, your BNB tokens into the spending wallet. And then in the spending wallet, you either purchase yourself an asset or you use your asset. I do have a photo linked. Uh, I can at least show people on the live chat. See in the live chat, I've got a, um, I've got an uncommon jogger. Um, so if people are very, very new to the game, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions like that. We'll start pulling up people off the floor. But um, the, the jogger for me is what I can see. You can see the number two three zero one eight. This actually came from my uncommon jogger that I bought in December in, in Solana Chain, and it was a very lucky game because it came out of a common shoe box. So very, very big shoe. Um, I owe a lot of luck to the missus for that one, and the difference is, earning GST on um, Binance is very lucrative early on, and this is what we want to make sure is we don't get caught up in the game of making a huge amount of money. We need to make sure we're giving out the right information to you guys coming. 
coming in and out and knowing how to play the game, being safe, all of those kinds of things. So first and foremost, before we get people on stage, make sure you're safe in the ecosystem. Make sure you're safe with your finances. Do not give anyone private seed phases. Do not click on spam links from someone saying, look, we're with the team, we work for Binance or we work for Steppen. Um, can we have access to your account because we believe you've got a spare thing? Any, anything like that. There are so many scams in crypto, you need to be safe in it. There's a physical aspect of it too. If you aren't an uh, athlete, if you're trying to look at what sneakers to get, should you get runners, joggers or walkers, um, go and have a look at some of the content on my channel, Solana Games with Barndog. Um, and you will see I've got a whole heap of videos that a lot of these things will work in the, the game that is on Binance on the BSC chain. So you've got to make sure this is a game that you go outside, you exercise with your GPS. So it's a very real thing. If you need to run with the runners that you're buying because they earn more GST, then you need to make sure you understand you've got to go from 8 to 20 kilometres an hour the entire time. If you run out of that, you can earn less and you can suffer penalties in the game of, of not getting that full allotment. So if you can't do that, maybe the jogger like I've got up on screen, a common version, of course, um, would be a better idea. I've got a, I have got another Binance speaker on, I'll quickly speak in. But I think let's get to a few questions. I see a lot of hands. Um, hopefully we've got these coming up in order. I'm gonna invite people a couple at a time and we will try to get through questions as much as possible. Good morning to everybody in uh, Binance as well, answering, saying hello. I'm trying to make sure I'll follow up with the questions that, that are direct questions. But I've invited Kui and Dennis to stage. I've got uh, I've got uh, nine 
shoes with two uncommons, and I uh, also had one of the Genesis uh, sneakers, and I got airdropped a B and B chain uh, shoe, but I uh, actually sold it way too early. <laughs> I didn't uh, think it's gonna have any uh, other value coming up later. But uh, I'm definitely keen on getting in, into the Binance chain side. But I'd like to know, um, like, what is the whole angle with having uh, the Binance chain side? I mean, is it ever going to be like a situation where you can switch your shoes or like bring it over from Solana to uh, BNB or your gems? Or is it completely separate? And is it going to be cross platform into like ADA or anything else at some point? Or is it. Binance Chain and Solana, is that it? And um, yeah, so is it basically starting over again? Is it worth, you know, getting rid of all my assets in Solana and starting over in BNB? Like, what's the benefit of having both? Um, and would you be able to ever swap between them is my question, I guess. Lots of questions in there, I love it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's all right, that's all right. We'll, we'll try to make sure. It's a good question. It's a good series of questions. So um, congratulations on the airdrop, of course. And if you did sell your... Um, Genesis, yeah, that's right. I mean, you've made good money, haven't you? You've made a profit. Yeah, right? yeah. I kept my Genesis, but I, I sold the B and B airdropped one. I yeah. wasn't uh, <laughs> sure yet. <laughs> so there's a lot of ways to look at the game. So with the game, why is it going multi-chain? So don't just ask Binance. It will be going yeah. to more chains eventually. So the world isn't going to be controlled by one chain. Solana is an amazing chain. I'm a Solana maxi. I'm bridging it back into Binance. I actually learned on Binance. Uh, one of my best mates, actually two of my best mates, actually started me off and they were big on Binance. And it's a great platform to learn on. I'm not just here to plug the, the chain itself. I did learn on the Binance chain, the Binance Live, uh, sorry, the Binance Australia app is simple. It's a good way to onboard money into, into your crypto funds. And it was good, but then I pivoted towards Solana because the gaming took control of my brain and I really learned about that side of it. And, you know, very good TPS, very cheap transactions. It was a fledgling um, blockchain. And, of course, it was just starting out earlier. I kind of missed the Binance pump. That was part of it. I, I started in February last year and I was just bridging on the pump. And it's, you know, that, that old thing in crypto, I wish I was in six months earlier. I wish I was in six months earlier. You can't. Hindsight, all those kinds of things, where we can go. So for me, that was my kind of Solana journey. But the actual assets linked between the two chains, so you share the same vault for energy, you share the same vault for having four maximum mystery boxes. But if you have a Solana mystery box, so say you have four Solana mystery boxes, you cannot store a Binance mystery box. So you need to open up a Solana mystery box to be able to make room to earn a mystery box on Binance. It also links okay. your total daily GST. So there's three things that are linked up there straight away. Energy, vault for um, mystery boxes, and total GST earnings. At the moment, I absolutely wouldn't be dumping both chains. I would, for me, I'm, I'm getting into um, Binance myself, and there's a great way to be able to make extra money on the GST price discrepancy might not be making as much as what you would with a level 30 uncommon. You could be earning more value in GST uh, on the price point with a common jogger or runner than you would be with an uncommon on Solana. It's very, very oh, interesting wow. with those discrepancies. Okay. So GST is over three times its value on Binance at the moment. So there's a lot of use cases where you can go not only down the track of the game, GMT, the second token is going to come in. So the uh, governance token, which is kind of a utility token mm -hmm. at the same time. There's so much utility to it. But that comes into play. And you're going to have people going, okay, should I earn GST or GMT today? And then you're going to have some people going, okay, do I earn GST or GMT on Solana or Binance? There's this huge, it's these chances. Last week we saw Solana go down. The blockchain went down because uh, there was a miss yeah. on and someone did millions of transactions and didn't bankrupt himself, right? Because ch transactions are cheap on Solana. This is a very interesting cake. Um, you couldn't do that on Ethereum. You couldn't do that on Binance, probably, because those costs are a lot more. And Binance is still a good chain. The costs are 15 to 30 cents to do a transaction. So multi-chain will be the way of the world for pretty much any blockchain game going out. We're seeing a lot of blockchain games popping up on things like um, Ethereum, and then they've got different versions of Ethereum 
Ethereum to be able to combat the gas costs. We're also seeing some going on other things like Polygon Matic. Um, there's, there's many great blockchains that are coming out down the track. So this is a way to tap into both uh, blockchain maxis as well as grow the user base and Binance is the, the biggest retail user base in the world. It's the biggest exchange in the world. So yeah. it makes sense and it was a team goal to come to Binance. It, it is huge. It's a huge market. And May is going to be a month that the team uh, is absolutely going to be pushing into, uh, into into this ecosystem of Binance. Today we gave away the first... I, I wasn't even aware of how the system worked with the Genesis for... Um, for Binance, we actually gave away the first Genesis sneaker I was aware of. So much like the Genesis on Solana, we had number one to 10,000. We're going to have the same for Binance. And this didn't make sense to me at the start because we saw 10,001 to 12,000 were the numbers that were used for the ASIC Genesis sneakers on Binance. They were the first NFTs on Binance. First partnership, first NFT to come to Binance. Not exactly the cleanest of launches, but that's how we had it, and we are getting better with making it. But now, we're getting the next, the, the first 10,000 sneakers coming out. So, the number 1 to 5,000 are going to be reserved for special giveaways, but the 5,001 to 10,000 will be donated out through however the team deems fit, and that will be things like Twitter spaces, competitions, live AMAs, um, partnership agreements, all these kinds of things, because a lot of people don't understand the sneakers for stepping on Solana, they weren't minted and sold, they were given away to the community. The first 5,000 were given to the beta testers in the closed beta for November oh, okay. and December, and then the next 5,000 were prizes and events. They weren't a mint, they weren't sold to the community. So the prices we're seeing in the open marketplace are completely controlled by the community and then if, if the game sees, uh, sorry, if, if the step and team sees the coins going out of out of spiral, out of price, then they can affect the market by doing like the, the, the mid cost, they change from 40, 60, 100%. But um, do I see green going completely onto one chain? I, I think multi-chain is going to be a super, super important function because if Solana's down and you need to get funds out, you could go, okay, today I'm gonna go and do my session on Binance and I'm going to take uh, BSC um, GST, and it's got. To, you're going to have a way to be able to pivot and switch, and you're going to have a lot of maxis that want to play the game as well. You know, by maxis I mean a single blockchain maxi, and they'll they'll go. Oh, I'm not going to go to Solana. I'll wait for Binance. And that's going to be a very real case. Um. All right. Cool. Yeah. That's that's great. I just have one final thing. Um, I'm currently living in the US, and uh, I know Binance.com or just Binance is, is banned over here and we have to use Binance US. Um, so the BNB chain that is used for step and that doesn't favor either one of those. That's a whole separate thing. I don't want to like, you know, kind of go down that road and then later on find out that the US doesn't uh, allow BNB chain because it's built on Binance and not Binance US. Um, is that something to be concerned about? I'm just trying to make sure I've got the question good. Um, so you're saying, obviously you've got a Binance Australia, yes? Uh, no, well, Binance US. Oh, sorry, sorry, Bi they... Binance US. You can use Binance US, sorry, I'll just adjust these sounds. Um, okay. So when you use the BSC chain in app, you're not going by a, a, a Binance uh, exchange. It's actually on, on the box. So it's like using, say, for example, a pancake swap. It's, it's a oh, app, right. an okay. app within the BSC ecosystem, within the BSC chain. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks Bin so much, man. Love your example, videos as well. And... Binance Smart Chain, I think it stands for. So, you know, saying okay. BSC chain is like saying ATM machine. But, um, yeah, so on the BSC network, then um, you're using it. So it's like using Pancake Swap because I'm pretty sure you guys can use Pancake Swap and stuff like that within uh, America. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, for now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very hard. Absolutely good question because people need to be aware of their um, not just whether you can use it, but tax implications for using a crypto game. That's super important. Um, we know that at the moment we don't have a tracking system in app. That they're working on that. The team is working on. It. There's so many things that people say, I'll oh, do this and this and this and this would be good. Um, and they would, absolutely. It's just one of those things that obviously there's only so much time and so many things that can get launched into a game at one time. Yeah. Cheers to
Joe, thanks for the questions. Yeah, thanks so much, man. Love your videos, and I'll keep uh, running. <laughs> oh, you got runners, have you? I've got uh, I've got runners. Yeah, I've got all runners, but I wouldn't mind a trainer or a uh, walker in the BNB chain, and uh, use that for GMT earnings. Yeah. So, um, so this is the funny thing, right? So why would you choose to earn GMT on Binance? This is this is a very tricky one for you. Binance GMT same price as Solana GMT. What's GST? Oh. At okay. the moment, I, I'd absolutely be thinking GST at the moment. So there's going to be for for BNB, okay? Yeah, because at the moment it's at sixteen fifty, and GMT is going to be the same because that swaps from Binance BSC onto SPR. Ah, uh, yes, coin. yes. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, good tip. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Cheers, Green Robo. Yep, cheers. Or Robo. Is it Robo or Robo? Uh, Robo. Robo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool, dude. Cheers, mate. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. Uh, Mr. Mr. Nsola, good morning. Just going to invite a few more people to stage. While I do that, I'll see whether um, we get... Obviously, Misha, I know Misha is definitely going to be talking. Um, I'll probably close down those other ones. Just, I've got a, a good question um, from the crowd. Uh, do you think there'll be a reward uh, for Binance Genesis holders? Uh, my opinion is there probably would be at some point in the stage because they've done that with Solana Genesis holders. So, talking to uh, Jason this morning, the Binance Genesis, so number one to 10,000, will be treated the same as Solana Genesis. So that's for me, yes. But then you've got the ASICs and then you've got the SOGs afterwards. So the ASICs and the SOG, so Solana Original Gangster, they were the airdrop for holding the original um, the original Solana Genesis. It's, it's hard. I've got to make sure I say the right one for people. Yes, the, the first one to 10,000 on the Binance chain, those numbers, they're going to be the same as uh, Solana Genesis. They're going to be big prizes. So if you guys can get onto stages, and whether that's listening to my Twitter sessions, whether that's joining the Step N AMAs, um, doing the competitions. At the moment, there's, I think it's one or two days left, there's a, there's a competition for animations, the GIF animations, um, and it's a different file format on Discord. But uh, those, it was a $10,000 US GMT worth, and then for the second to fifth prize, another four prizes of $2,000 worth of GMT. There's some really, really big prizes going out to the community. I just want to get through some of these questions on Binance. Misha, welcome to the stage before um, before we get into yours. Uh, good morning to everyone in Binance. I see a lot of good mornings, good morning, a lot of happy thoughts. Uh, what are my thoughts on the BSC Steppen chain? Uh, what are my thoughts on it at the moment? So Binance uh, QDSD, uh, appreciate the question. It's, it's very early at the moment. It's very hard and expensive for people getting into it, but that's because we don't have to use base that we're used to. So on Solana, of course, we've got half a billion users, and that's where the, the, there's a lot of old crypto on Binance as well, because we might have seen people that bought in at Binance at $3, and they value it differently than someone who spent $400 on it. So crypto is a very funny beast. There's always someone out there that's got more money than you, is, is kind of the theory I work on. So be careful with that. Use that in your thinking. Don't just FOMO into situations. But I think it'll get better, and Stephen will absolutely do things this month to make sure that we're um, we're helping the community and the crowd to, to get into it and make it a, 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 an entry point which is decent. Um, rental features, we're not going to see anything along the lines of rental features until about September and that might not even be September. So we're actually going to see something which will be like a prelude to rental systems. Um, and I'm very excited to see what that is going to be. Uh, the stream is good. Thank you, Binance. Uh, Lou 8LN. Sound is fine. A lot of people asking for prizes. So this, the first few stages that are, that are going to be on Binance for me, I'm going to make it very clear to people, is I want to be giving you guys the right information to onboard you into the ecosystem. So it's not about giving out full prizes for me, like I, I'm a bit of a funny streamer, I'm a bit of a, a traditional guy, so I'd rather onboard you smart, give out, help people with questions, 
game, the game, the gameplay, whether that's one sneaker, two sneakers, three sneakers or more. I love the actual gameplay of it helping. Um, prizes and that, we will push more prizes once I've got this a little bit cleaner in the process of recording and it's not so buggy for me. But, uh, have we got any questions from the crowd you want to go through, Gundiver, from the, um, the chat channel? Otherwise, we'll know from me, and ask you. Um, yeah, so one of the, well, the reason one is, do we need to be concerned about depreciation of our sole assets? All right, so depreciation of Solana assets, I guess that's going to happen in any game, in any game where the asset is pegged to Solana, which is still not a great system, but that, that's what we have across the board, isn't it? So should we be worried about it? It really depends. So Solana goes up and down. This is why sometimes your your NFT is going to appreciate or depreciate. It depends on Binance. Uh, sorry, it depends on Bitcoin a lot. But should you be worried about it? It really depends if you're looking at the value of it. You can use that asset every single day. It's part of your vault. You are earning GST every single day. So the price of it, to me, doesn't make any difference to me. Um, but I'm not trying to sell my assets. So if you want to be selling them, if you're looking at it, you're speculating on price to sell at the high and buy at the low, you can't guarantee that where is the height going to be. Last week we saw the NFTs on Solana get to around 20 base floor, and then obviously it's been between 10 and 13. It's sitting at around 13 at the moment. The same could be said on Binance. Be very careful on Binance. We're seeing around 13... 13 no, I'm going to get used to saying this BNB and... and Solana, but we're seeing at the moment 13.5 BNB. How is the price going to affect? Is this the height at the moment? We know that they were 15 to 17 earlier. I think in the upcoming weeks the price will go down uh, because I don't think that price is going to sit that high. It's just four times more expensive than Solana, so I do think they'll lower down. But how long that takes, I couldn't promise that. The thing is, with that sneaker you've got, you've got earning capacity. 24 hours after you purchase it and the cooldown, and you can earn from it. But welcome to stage, Misha. Um, how, how does that play out? Because you can only run out 
outside or jog or walk outside? That's right, and, and it's a good question which has been a, not, you know, asked several times, but it's still a good question to come up. So you're going to have to factor that into your sneakers and your building and your long-term goal of the game. It's a good question. So we know trainers in the game are scaling and earning the same amount as runners. So the good thing with the trainers is you could actually use those to increase your fitness level and grow and get to a stage where you can, you know, you're walking, you're walking quick, you're jogging, and then you're running and you earn the same amount during those. And during the colder winter months, uh, you could be walking uh, and still earn the same amount. So maybe trainers long-term might be a consideration for you, uh, or a secondary pair of shoes where you get a jogger and or walker that you could walk at that lower speed and get a return. There could be different combinations in the game that you do as well, depending on how much resources you've got in the game, how many pairs of sneakers. You could do like a Lux sneaker, which has got uh, on a jogger, and that then means you've got a walking speed, and you could play that kind of a strategy during those colder months, but that's not a great idea because you're talking of months of snow. Um, I'd consider looking at a trainer do, or considering maybe a jogger as a main sneaker. Gotcha, thank you. Thank you so much for answering me the question. I was thinking in the month of uh, winter, maybe just not walking and jogging, just selling minting and selling, minting and selling. No, I'd keep moving, dude. I, I would be planning a, a, a play around min, uh, of movement because you're getting that energy every day and that would just be dead assets, dead dead earnings. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely, awesome. and think of it not just as the earnings. So if you're getting fit and you're spending six months of the year exercising and then you don't exercise, think of the actual mental health. So when your body is exercising, you're getting the serotonin and the endorphins and your body is getting those happy drugs. When you come down from that, if you stop exercising, your body gets depressed. So what's gonna happen is you'll be pumped up, really, really excited, your, en your energy levels go up, you're working better, you're sleeping better, you're having more energy in your everyday life. If you just fall flat because you, you're not moving at all, you could have a, a, a real life effect on that where you might get slowly unhappy for a period of time until your body levels out again. So I would think more, how can I safely move during that time? Do you need to um, research parks, local walking tracks? I know a lot of different cities have these parks. Um, look at Central Park in, in New York, for example. So that could be an experience for you as well to find tracks that are good, that are, that are laid out and done, but or otherwise just get yourself a walker, jogger, or a trainer long term. Gotcha. Okay. All right, sounds good. Thank you for having me on the stage. I appreciate your answer. I, I, I figure someone has asked that question, but I'm new here, and, and I, I have never heard the answer to it. No, no, good question. New questions are good. We've got to answer it for the next generation of players as well. Thank you, mate. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yep, bye-bye. Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can, Misha. I was going to go back oh. to you, my dude. How you going? <laughs> Finally, good. How are you? Yeah, good, man. Very good. Is this our normal Misha? Is this our Kazakhstan gentleman? Uh, Ukrainian one. <laughs> oh, Ukrainian one. Okay, I've got a couple. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I have a question about uh, GMT earnings on uh, on Binance, Binance chain. Do you think it's going to be the same pool, same pool of earnings for Binance chain and for Solana chain, or how is it going to be split, or is it going to be split at all? It's a really interesting question. Um, can't answer it. I like it. So this is where I say at the start of the show is that uh, I get to learn these questions along the way and it helps me going into AMAs. So we know from the GMT earning that there's 6 billion tokens total and that every minute of the day there's a certain amount allocated and distributed amongst the amount of people mining that GMT at the time. So I would extrapolate that and think it would be the same across all chains and it's gonna take some serious back-end work. Um, I wouldn't think they would say half's going to Solana, half's going to Binance, and then divvy it out from there. But that's a lot of that's a lot of blockchain work, isn't it? That's a lot of, you're gonna need some big supercomputers running the uh, nodes and services for that. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. But I was just wondering, you know, like, uh, maybe like as a alternative strategy, just to kind of like get a GMT earner on the Binance chain, just ready up, you know, maybe like for extra time or something. Well, at the moment, this is what I've, we, we had a chat to um, one of our last gentlemen about how I was saying, I think GST is going to be the meta on Binance for a while. So have a look at people are going to want to mint, um, people are going to want to level up, GST will add 
absolutely be monstrous and have a look at the market went down with um, uh, Bitcoin in, in the last 24 hours. GMT went down with it a little bit, but the GST is still holding pretty firm, isn't it? So GST is because of the uh, anti-inflationary use cases. There's, there's so many use cases for GST. It's going to be the meta for quite a while. But I do have a video on um, Solana Gaming with Barndog. You can see that and I talked about the GMT earnings and how to consider that for the future. I, I just think for the next, especially four to eight weeks, maybe anywhere from two to four weeks definitely, and from there, GST will need to be earned early on. And that's what happened on Solana was people just gobbled up all of that GST early on for ages. GMT is still going to be a good six to eight weeks away from earning. So I don't think it's too much to stress about right now on the Binance chain. All right, got it. Things to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Barnack. And I guess, Misha, to talk about that a little bit more, would you instead think maybe I should earn my GMT on Solana? It's a cheaper entry point. You can buy a shoe for a lot cheaper. You can start leveling it up. There's things to consider there too. So if you need to buy that same equivalent sneaker on Binance, you're paying four times the cost. But because the pool shared and that coin GMT from SPL can transfer on to become a BSC chain coin, there's there's a lot to think about with that to break it down. Yeah, yeah, right. But I'm already I'm already ready on uh, with my GMT earner on the Solana chain, so like, no need to worry about that. <laughs> same dude, same. I'm just, just popping mine up a little bit at the moment. It's unspec, it's ready to go. But um, yeah, those link around a fair bit. All right, cheers. Thank you, dude. Uh, HP Max, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Yeah, good, dude, very good. Okay, I have a bad English, I'm so sorry. Uh, I have a suggestion. Uh, su suggest. I want to see a widget in uh, app. Uh, if we pin piece or Solana chain die, I want, to, uh, I want to see a red button, don't do this, man. Can you do this? Um... So I understand the question. Your English is awesome, dude. It's better than my Russian. I'm, I'm guessing that sounds like a Russian accent or, or a, a East, East accent. Um, a widget onto whether the, you mean whether the network's got low performance. So like we would see the Solana network went down last week and it would say, don't use Solana chain. Is, is that what you're saying? Uh, I, I saw this uh, in Discord. Uh, and see this in t t Telegram channel, but I don't uh, see this on uh, app. It's something I'm I guessing to... the team would say because um, because it's available in other resources and other options, um, probably not for a while, but it's definitely something to be aware of. The thing is because the spendings wallet is different than the chain, it doesn't, it's not a major difference. You can still go and do your earning even if Solana's down. And same with Binance, you can go and earn on Binance, um, on, on, sorry, on the BSC chain if the Binance chain itself at large is down. So it's because there's spending and the wallet at the moment is separate. Uh, it's, it's definitely something to think about though, dude. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, man. Thank, Thank you, dude. You. Thank Thanks you. for coming on stage, HP. Thank, Thank, Thank you, mate. Thank you. Uh, we did have someone else join, but he's left. Uh, uh, Gloria. Oh, oh, sorry, Gundog, you got a question, have you? Yeah, just someone's asking, um, will you be able to link uh, Stefan Binance Wallet to MetaMask? I know there's some linking going on on Solana with Phantom Wallet. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I haven't tried it. So... As a Solana Maxi, I had a MetaMask ages ago. I would assume yes. Uh, SafePal would be another option too. So SafePal is a pretty awesome app. It's a pretty awesome wallet all around. And I know Killer Machine, he absolutely loves it. It's his favorite wallet. It's bloody good because that's also got a Solana wallet as well. So there's definitely going to be these wallets where people are starting to look at and go, what can service all of my needs? And something like... Um, SafePal does Solana, it does BSC, could be options to look at. I, I can't answer as I haven't linked between the two. I would assume yes, because like uh, like you're saying, Gun Diver, SPL, you can link up on the on the Phantom Wallet, so you can link your um, your, your step in account to uh, that. Uh, Toria, welcome to stage. Um, good evening. 
Good evening. Uh, thank you for letting me on stage. I have a, a quick question or maybe a concern. I'm sorry, are you hearing me? Yeah, do it loud and clear. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, I didn't, didn't get it. Um, uh, question slash concern. Um, uh, you were speaking a few minutes ago about uh, the Binance Smart Chain, the difference between GST prices on the Binance Smart Chain and the Solana Smart Chain. Um, I'm guessing this is due to the number of users, the numbers of uh, the numbers uh, of shoes uh, minted on this chain. And my first question would be: I'm sorry if I'm allowed to ask uh, one or maybe more. If if there is a, a bridge, or will there be a bridge for you to extract your GST or GMT earnings from, for example, Solana chain to the Binance chain? At the moment, uh, GMT is not a problem. That's a SPL and a BSC coin, so you can just transfer it from your one wallet through Binance or something like that, and and onto one chain to the other. Um, GST is a little bit different. So you have to mine GST on both chains. They're different coins, and there's no bridge. The team has said they won't be doing a bridge. Um, they won't be using them due to the Rona network error and other other hacks. Um, so it's important that we get people mining and playing the game, right? We're mining this GST and earning it. So that's part of it. There are other mechanics we've seen that the team did uh, last week where they went 40%, 60%, 100% change from minting from GST into GMT. So there are other things that can, that can happen like that. But really it's just onboarding users into the game. So we had 20 million tokens put on PancakeSwap and they just got gobbled up. Um, and people smashed out minting and all those kinds of things. And there's a huge arbitrage chance to be able to purchase the coins and then sell them later for a markup. But be careful speculating on coins. This $16.80 or whatever it's at at the moment, that's not going to last like that. Yeah, thanks. That was actually part of my concern because obviously there's a very uh, fine balance between uh, shoe cost or floor, ply, floor, floor price versus... Uh, GST token pricing. So my concern was basically uh, exactly that. You know, the dumping from one network to the other may cause an imbalance. So and then and I also heard you were uh, planning to onboard other networks as well. I don't know, maybe Polygon or whatever. Um, and this could be maybe a, a disadvantage to say. I mean, it's, I think it's a good idea to not have a bridge directly, you know, and having to mint it, keeping a healthier economy for all. I think, I think the economies would be healthier. Well, I think if we could swap the coins freely between both chains, that would help level it out. But uh, the bridges won't be used as for whether we onboard other blockchains. So the teams looked at and talked about down the track, and we're not talking this year, you know, there's absolutely they're going to consider other blockchains. It, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? There's not just one blockchain is going to rule the world. Is going to be a multitude of successful chains and and users and and retail users on on many many chains. So it also gives people a different chance. If one chain's down, they can use another. Some people might not know about Solana or use Solana at all, but they might be on um, Binance. They might be on Polygon. They might be on ADA. All those kinds of options. So. Definitely down the track, they can grow. Um, and this is where it's important, though, to make sure that the first two chains, because Binance and BSC is the second chain. We need to make sure this shit's done properly. We can't just go, oh, yeah, we're going to onboard this chain and this chain and this chain. When there's, there's problems, the price of entry is way too high. We need to make sure users can get in at a, at a, at a reasonable level. I think that's that's great. That's amazing. Your, your roadmap is solid. Your tokenomics are solid. I believe in the project 100 percent and and of course since i believe in it i want to see it thrive for all of us so maybe that's why i express my concern regarding that aspect and yeah i think it's it's definitely an advantage to have a, a multiple amount of chains or blockchains from which to switch on or or prefer like based on preference and not price Obviously, it's harder to onboard people when you say no, and the initial investment would be 3K and not less, you know, on Solana. So that would kind of overload one or the other. But I think it's best to choose due to preference, personal preference, than, you know, pricing and ROI and other aspects. 
Agreed, dude. Agreed. There's a lot of things to go into it. And this is where it's really cool seeing it. And I've, I've researched a lot of Solana games and seeing a lot of them at the moment pivoting to become multi-chain. Um, and, you know, seeing some, some chains are more preferred than others. Um, of course, people think about Ethereum because that's got so much money on it. But uh, the gas fees are astronomical, of course. Complicated. Yeah, it is a complicated system. So there are yeah. ways around that some games are doing the gas fees, but this is where Binance and the BSC chain becomes really, really cool, is that those fees are quite low. They're, they're, they're super high in comparison to Solana, aren't they? But um, they are very manageable in a day where you might be making 10 GST from one asset. And that 10 GST is, blimey, 180 bucks. That's half of Binance, just about. So... Um, up a BNB. But cheers to your question, Arthurian. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Sorry for taking up your time. I'll be listening. Thank you. And uh, and the best. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Don't be sorry, my dude. Good question. Thank you for coming on. Mr. Juan David. Hello, guys. Uh, Good morning to you. Good morning, mate. Can you? Yeah, loud yeah. clear. I have... Yeah, I want to say that uh, um, thank you for this stepping up. This is like huge life changing in my life and I'm from country Georgia and this is kind of super popular in my country now and I'm just wondering if it's, if it's possible to organize some kind of life event in my country like uh, because like people are super interested and they want to like see by themselves how, how it works and um, I would be, it would be nice to have some kind of life event in my country and especially in the capital of Tbilisi. And what do you think? Is it possible? Or how is it possible? Do you want to eat an armed guard, armed guard to visit country Georgia? No, no, no. Just just <laughs> like some kind of live events here. Like maybe we can, all the users do some such kind of live events here. Or, or oh, is it possible? Bit of a light joke. First and foremost, I hope it is safe in Georgia. Obviously, we had a lot of world events over in that side of the country. So... You know, hopefully you and your family and friends are safe. Um, as for, we don't have any Georgian uh, ambassadors. I don't know of any applicants myself, as obviously one of one of the ambassadors, um, you see my face around a lot. And I'm travelling to Athens, I'm travelling to Paris, and we're doing events there. Um, okay. It's a super awesome part of the game that's coming out, is people meeting up, and you wouldn't, like, the experience and the fun of 120 people talking about the game, playing the game, showing each other the game, helping each other. These are really important parts of the socialisation and social buy of the game. Um, I would suggest at the start maybe seeing what channels are available on um, Discord in Step N and seeing in the community and seeing whether you can just organise those groups yourself. Um, at the moment, we're encouraging it. The ambassadorship is growing. Uh, and the team does analyse the, the applicants that come through. So I'm noticing a lot of Country Georgia people actually talking on, on a lot of the live events, of course. I do 10 to 15 different streams a week, so I am noticing a lot more in the population coming through. Um, so definitely uh, probably try and, and start something from Discord first. Dude. Even if you're meeting up with 10 or 15 people to start off with, that could be a prelude to start getting some bigger events. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Thank you, mate. Mr. Josh White, I think you're next on stage. Good morning, Josh. I see you moving your microphone around there. If you could give it permissions to access your microphone. Do you have any questions, um, Gun Diver, in the meantime? Uh, there's a few in the crowd, but I've, I've answered most of them anyway, just in the chat. I guess, you know, um, one of them's asking about... Uh, events in the future, whether they'll be announced or run at the same time across chains, which I imagine they would do, unless it's a chain-specific event. Yeah, um, I mean, that might talk about the uh, the achievement, the badge system, and I'd imagine they'll, they'll do them in the whole game together, but I guess it, it depends. It wouldn't be earning base. A lot of them might be distance and time over a certain amount of time. We're going to start seeing where the people that might not have the same amount of assets as someone as a whale or even myself, you know, like I don't want to be un unrealistic of where I am in the game from where I started. So someone might only have one or two or three commons, 
um, there might be achievements that come into the space, run 500, run 1,000 kilometres. So those are very real things that can come in. Um, and I doubt that they would be um, chain specific. But as for live events um, offline and online at the same time, uh, we would just have to see. So achievements and badges, I think, are quarter three. Uh, Mr. Josh White, have you got your microphone going at the moment? Macintosh Red, go for it, dude. How can, how can we help? How you doing, Barn Dog? Really good, dude. We can hear you loud and clear. That's, uh, I didn't pick the accent there. Where are you from, my man? Where's home? Oh, uh, sunny Miami, Florida. Oh, dude, 25th of, uh, 25th of May. How are you going? Whoa, what's going on the 25th of May? There's a live meetup, dude. Live meetup on the Wednesday. Ah, wow, okay, so then, yes, I'll be there. <laughs> so that is in the events tab. There. In the events tab, we'll get a flyer out, we'll get some more advertising out. But yeah, dude, um, uh, it, yeah, it must be pretty good great. weather there at the moment. I've seen some photos. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Um, so here, here's my question. I'm, I'm just kind of curious. I just want to hear your thoughts, more of a macroeconomic uh, conversation. But so far, the number of days it takes to break even on the app Regardless if you do two sneakers, nine sneakers, 15, 30, whatever the, whatever the level you're going, it seems to be between 40 and 50 days. And I just want to know, is that is that an intended number by step in? Do they want that number to ultimately be higher long term, lower long term? And then really, I guess the million dollar question is once someone's broken even, let's say day 45, once they've broken even, then it's expected that that person's just going to be training GST from the app moving forward because um, he's hit that, that milestone. So how does he add value at that point? Um, seems to be that that's the point everyone's going for. And, and is the game going to try to push that off longer? And then what's the fear that people won't want to be playing for 120 days to break even, for example? Um, so you're trying to lead down the, the Axie Affinity stage um, and or slash the, the tokenomics, how it works towards long term. So you are kind of right on the tokenomics as well, you know, it, it is anywhere from uh, 40 to, to 80 days to pay off your assets, and it is, depending on where you are. So the, the returns in the game are very huge. Uh, do I think they're going to stay like that long term? Um, I, I, I think they'll come down, they have to come down eventually. But if you have a look at even if you earn one quarter of what you're earning now, is still super, super huge returns. Um, so they want to grow the user base. I think is one of the reasons why it's such a high return. It's a high price of entry at the moment, but obviously the return on investment, ROI, everyone wants to know about ROI, is huge. So yeah. it's a way to be able to grow the sneakers. Now, does that mean if you get nine sneakers and you, you've earned your money, you've, you've paid off yourself, you're gonna drain those out? Not necessarily. The way the game's triggered, the way the game's played, I think you're gonna find a lot of people that have returned their investment are actually going to continue playing. And there's a reason for that is because it's more than just a, it's more than a, 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 a crypto earner. The game, the social fire, the elements, the physical fitness, it's going to become an app, I think, that could absolutely change the world. Um, obviously, we need to make sure that the game doesn't spiral out of control and the longevity is there and the tokenomics stay sustainable. And this is why we saw reactions. If, if people watched last week's AMA, again, on my YouTube, you'll be able to see that. Um, with, the coin can't can't burst and go through the roof in GST earnings. It's not sustainable. Um, so you're going to find things oh, like there's there's uncommon sneakers, rare sneakers, epic sneakers, then there's legendary sneakers, and there's nine levels of gems. For anybody to be completely maxed out on a sneaker, I think it's, it's not easy. <laughs> I haven't reached right. it. So it depends because the game is very long term playable because there's a lot of things and and GST use cases like mystery boxes, how now there's a minimum cost to open up mystery boxes, how there's cost to repair your shoes. The anti-inflationary mechanics on the coin are absolutely amazing, and that's why GST is such hard to get at the start on Solana, and now we're seeing it on Binance as well. So those are there, and the team can adjust the earnings, of course, lower them as needed down the track. Um, are we going to see burning mechanics on shoes is another one everyone's saying well, what happens once we've got millions of users 
and we're making millions and millions of shoes, we can bring in burning mechanics and things like that. That's a logical solution and, and a logical progression for the game. But there's, there's always, a, it's about doing game updates, keeping people interested in the game, the game side of it, as well as the energy and exercise. But have a look at um, something a lot of people don't talk about with uh, thinking about smoking. You're going to start seeing some friends that quit the game because they're smokers and then start exercising and they're putting their money from the cigarettes into buying in-game assets. They're going to be reliant on the, the daily exercise to, to give them that, that, that fix and to, it'll be really helpful for them. Uh, right, so I, I, I do think, I'm, I'm happy you touched on it because I think this morning, or, or I don't know what time it was by you, but this morning I think evidenced the fact that you know, everyone keeps talking about that it's not about the crypto earning, but when it was down this morning for about, a, what, a good hour and a half, I know I didn't play the game. I'd rather just wait and try to earn. And I think that if the if the cost to get into the game right now, one shoe is 1200 bucks or whatever it is, I don't think anyone's going to be doing it strictly for the exercise when you have so many free apps available. So I think, I think... I think it's a little disingenuous, not what you're saying, but just the concept in general that people want to do it for its own sake because there's free options out there. So if you're paying to be part of the, to, of the ecosystem, then it has to be worth the reward. Yeah, yeah I look, I agree, Dan, and you don't even need to use an app. You can just go outside for a walk, right? Um, right, right. So absolutely, there's going to need to be more use cases. There's going to need to be social fire coming into the game. But what do you have when you have a user base of 50 to 100 million people? Because if you go through and look at some of the AMAs, the team's not aiming for 500,000 daily active users. The team is aiming to launch into millions and millions of users. You become a, a, a very strong force in launch pads. You can launch other tokens, other games, other coins, other NFTs. You can bring in traditional right. marketing through that game, and the game can become a launch pad for marketing through not just sneakers. Don't just think when Nike, when Adidas, when Puma, all of these things. What about when health fitness, when, you know, all of these different things, there's so many different platforms that can be launched via Stepan. And, you know, there's many, many other moves to earn coming out into the alternative. So I, I like what you're touching on, and, and it's good, and it's good to be challenged, and it's not disingenuous. I do agree. But even at one quarter of our earnings, you are earning huge in comparison to any other game out there. So obviously pe people do need to think, long term in the game, don't leverage your house in the position to do what you're doing. Um, you know, right. Taking profits isn't a bad thing. Don't overextend. These are all basic things in crypto that people should challenge and should absolutely be thinking about long term. So you just your final quick thought. Let's call this utopia. The amount of money people are making on a daily basis with step in. We'll call it utopia today. How long do you see utopia lasting before some significant reductions occur in daily earning? This is a good question, and I can't answer it um, because I don't know the answer. So how long would I judge it to be? I don't see anything yeah. changing in six months. So this, this wow. is, it, it's hard because at the moment we've got half a million daily active users, and the yeah. team's not pushing for half a million. This is just a slow increase. Gradually, you see we've got the activation codes active at 2,000 a day. Anybody that's playing the game can give out codes. Um, so it's it's a hard question because kind of I'm putting my, my name out there and my face out there and, if, you know, in two months if it gets halved and then everyone's going, oh, but Barn Dog told us this. Well, no. Yeah. And how do I see it going? I'm looking at long term with the team. I'm looking at what their goals are. I've met the team. I've met Bjorn live at the Adelaide event and sat down right. and, and talked to him. And these are real people. They aren't thinking now. They're thinking years in front. And to actually see them live and meet them was pretty changing for a lot of things for me as well. They're, they're super genuine. And um, I love the time I had there. And the live event we're going to be doing in Sydney, I get to meet the other co-founder in Jerry because that's his home. So actually uh -huh. meeting the team makes it a bit more live for me, a bit more real. But... Um, where do I see the game going? Dude? Like, I, look, do I take profit? I've taken profit since January. So I've paid, yeah. I, I'm full time in crypto. I've paid some of my wages since January. There's no perfect place to take profit out. Am I shilling out all of my, am I getting rid of my assets and my sneakers? No, I'm building up in the game. So, you know, there's, there's rare sneakers I'm into now and rare minting. I want to mint towards an epic. 
So I am long-term game, and I've kept all of my Genesis sneakers I had from the start of the game. There's there's a good chance I could sell out now and, and make money, but it wouldn't make me happy. The, the money side of it, I've seen a, a huge change in the personal life of me, my friends. We've reconnected. The social aspect of it with your family and friends is absolutely a part of it, um, but it doesn't mean you just do that. You know, if the game goes to zero, then of course you've got to reanalyze that, but you're not going to take away that physical health, fitness, time with my family and friends that I've had for the last six months. So there's that side of it too. And the reality you're saying is people can go and do that for free, but were people doing that for free? They weren't. We've got, right. a, we've, yeah. got, we've got a culture that has become reliant on going to work, coming home, sitting on their PlayStation, their iPad, their phones, playing computer games, and then eating dinner, watching TV and going to bed, rinse and repeat. Whereas now, Mm -hmm. this is changing it, and it's pushing people, and it's challenging people. The rewards are there. Dude, I love it. Like, you know, I can definitely see where you're going down, and it's good. It's it's good challenging thoughts. People shouldn't be leveraging houses to get into it, but definitely it's it's something you can look at for a uh, a great app to consider getting into for crypto. There's nothing like it at the moment. There is nothing like it. I agree. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, dude. Yeah, just that's something I love about the app. I've spoken about it before to lots of people. Is if I put a lot of time and effort into another coin and sat around and all these Twitter like retweets, the Discord channels, and all this to try and make some money, and did it for six months, and then you know as long as you get your return and your investment out, and then I did it for another six months, and then the coin crashed, I would just be what a waste of time. There's no way I'll ever have that with Stefan. I've already lost six kilos. I've had a lot of fun doing it. Um, yeah, it's once you get your return investment out and you can just go around just being fit and healthy. Well, honestly, I'm not too fast with it. The money side is just a bonus. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And that's that's the reality, is, and it? it's even helped Gundiver and I reconnect. We live in the same city. We grew up together. We've I've lived here for four to five years in Cairns, Queensland, and. Um, you know, like, it's very easy to get busy in your life. But now Gundiver, my brother-in-law, we do run together. We're going to go and run a park run tomorrow. So it's been a way of us reconnecting together. We could have always done that beforehand, but we didn't. This is this is the reality that it's kicked us in the ass. Um, the brother-in-law, he's only 34 years old. He's, he's got eight years younger than I am at Gundiver. But, um, yeah, he can't, he can't even keep up with us. So it's, um, it's a game that's pushing, pushing limits and pushing boundaries. Yeah, like I say, it's just a carrot on the stick, you know. The money is the carrot and the running is the stick. <laughs> I want to get to um, the gun diver and I worked on a track fishing boat back in our early 20s. And um, this is something I, I want to get to is that broken body feeling of what happened on the fishing boat. Easily the most, the hardest job I've ever had in my life was working on a trap fishing boat out of Broome, Western Australia. Amazing experience, I'll never get back. And um, we talk and laugh about it. Literally couldn't walk, couldn't use my arms. I had that much chafing and stuff like that. So why, why would you think you want to get to that? This is what I see marathon runners as and the amazing part of the game. So, you know, I've never ever dreamt of being a runner and it's really, I've, I've booked in for a half marathon in July and some of the people and the athletes coming out are super impressive as well. But before we digress too much further, we've gone well over limit. Let's knock off the people on stage um, Josh White, have, have you got your microphone on, my dude? Are you good to go? Nope, that's all right. And what about Sawyer Lazy? Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, dude, loud and clear. Yeah, uh, I just want to say that, like, being an avid gamer, I really wanted to keep improving, getting better gear. So that's like one of my incentives to play this game. I've been in this community, I think, for the last two weeks and just been really into buying shoes the last week or so. So yeah, that's like my incentive. And being someone like affected by COVID, uh, I work from home a lot of times. So this really gives me the incentive to go out and like run and stuff. Uh, so that's the cool part of it. Uh, engage with a lot of friends on this. So um, I did have a question uh, re- related to renting. Um, so. My question was, how many can you rent out or use? Um, can you rent out from different chains at once, or and how will that affect the the market for shoes and the floor price? 
So at the moment, there is no rental in the system, and it's being delayed because the team is very, very aware of the Axie effect and how that kind of hurt the game long term because you had millions of players coming in and just playing the game and dumping the coin. So at the moment, no rental system. Um, the next announced uh, possible date for something is September. We might see a prelude to the rental system. So I can't really talk about how it's going to work on the, on the cross-chain, the, the multi-chain side of things. Um, but, yeah, I would imagine you'll be able to rent out as many shoes as you want. That will affect your energy. Um, obviously, you'll, you'll lose energy based on what you're renting out. But it's, there's a lot of unknowns at the moment. The team needs to be super, super careful with the rental system because what will happen is people will want to come into the system and they'll need that money. They'll want to rent sneakers and walk for 10 minutes to, to half an hour or whatever a day. Um, there are basic things we know about the rental system from previous discussions, but it's kind of hard to talk about now because there's going to be lots of changes to when the team puts it out. So really, sep excuse me, sorry, really September, October, uh, before we even see anything about that. But it, it's super important, like, rentals can be a game killer. This, this is an important thing. Anybody that knows about the uh, lower socioeconomic countries, South South America, and like Venezuela, relies heavily on play to earn. If all of these millions of players come in and they're earning and dumping the coin, that can be a game killer. And it can also bring in institutional investments, which then means the daily player, the average player, it becomes harder for them to purchase into the game, making it coming out of their control, and we get these huge assets like happened here. Axie that become worth way, way too much. And look at Binance at the moment, the, the, you know, 14 BNB floor already, way too much. So what if we had investors, institutional investments into that, and they could rent the sneakers out and ride those prices, it becomes too much. So we need to definitely make sure that um, we are being responsible when that system comes out, and the team is completely aware of that. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so I won't ask too many more questions on the renting because, uh, uh, like, I, I guess, because one of my question was more just, if you do rent out, does that mean you can't use that shoe at that point? And yeah, that you'll lose that. energy, you won't be able to use that shoe, but we will avoid the rental question now, just for the pure fact that the team yeah. is, is re-planning how they're going to that out. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you, dude. Thank you for coming on. Um, I mean, gun diver. How are we? Uh, obviously, we've gone a little bit over stage. That's like you've been on stage with me a couple of times now on Twitter spaces and stuff. You handle it well. I've seen you answering questions in the Discord. I very much appreciate it. What are your kind of closing thoughts on today? Yeah, I guess um, the, the the Binance launch. Um, I mean, we bring it back to WoW, don't we? Because we played a lot of WoW, and I see Binance is just in WoW. Sometimes you have faction imbalances, and that's kind of where Binance is. They. Uh, are certainly the uh, least played faction at the moment, and they need a bit of a they need a bit of a help. And look, I think that comes the team needs to probably look at bumping things there a little bit or helping and assisting it. But I also think it just comes down to the community. Um, so myself personally and my girlfriend, we have two accounts. Um, I'll be moving one of my my account to Binance, and she'll be keeping hers on Solana. And I feel that that gives a bit of um, versatility. You know, maybe if you're looking to take profit out, one week Binance is up and Solana's down a bit, well, you can grab the profit from Binance. Next week, maybe Solana's up and Binance is down a bit, well, you grab the profit from Solana. So, yeah, I think there's a lot to think about there, but I think the community has to really, you know, if, if you're thinking about it, well, it's up to you, but it comes down to what the community wants to do. Yeah, I like it. The much unloved faction, like Alliance and Classic. Um... It is. We do bring a lot of this back to the game, which is really, really funny. I guess it's one of the uh, things that connected us, my, myself and the team very early, that they are avid WoW players. So that's our, our my second session on Binance. Gundive will be back every week. We're going to be getting on guests. Um, will there be customer care or support system? There is currently Binance. You can send in tickets as you need. Uh, when do we get Burning GMT to redistribute points? Um, KWSUK. I'm not sure on the exact date on what that's launching. The GST daily cap increase will be next, but that answers the last couple of questions on there. But, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be the end of our my second session, but I'm going to be doing this once a week to start off with. I've got to be very careful with how I book time. Um, not book time, but how I make my time available. Look, I really love doing the video content.
content for people and I've realised from the Adelaide live event I've not done a good enough job and that's I'm not worried about other YouTubers covering the content and that kind of thing I just want to make sure I, I put out the best content I can for beginners and I'm not worried about um, smashing clicks and likes and getting things going spiral I want to be a good content creator and make sure I help you guys in the community so I had a, a good question in, in the crowd today you know like about the GMT crossbow chains the earning and Doing these sessions and these shows helped me do my AMAs with the team on Saturday nights. Um, but there is plenty of information out there and available. So you can go to my YouTube, Solana Gaming with Barndog. You can go and check out other streamers. You can go and check out other ambassadors. We have a lot that are starting to fire up. Two of them specifically in the American ones. Uh, you've got K Trains doing free Twitter sessions a week. You've got um, James Work. He's doing uh, Twitch sessions. He's a Twitch partner. He's streaming. He's going to be doing a collaboration of ambassadors. We have a lot of other ambassadors. This is the problem because obviously I only speak my English. Um, other ambassadors around the world. The Japanese are awesome. Um, and the Chinese put out content. I know the Koreans put out content and they manage a lot of people as well. So if English isn't your strong point, we do have many ambassadors. I think we're up to 16 at the moment. It's, it's careful to make sure we, we grow the ambassadorhood from people that are from the ground floor up. That's something the team's wanted. They want them getting the right information out and, and helping the community grow. It's not about just earning GST. It's about doing it safe, being safe in the ecosystem, both physically and with your money and your assets online. But, um, yeah, really, really cool session. I appreciate everyone coming in. Um, don't forget to go and check later on uh, any strategy videos and things like that. Of course, I put up the GMT one last night and we have our AMAs Saturday night in Australian time and they're uploaded normally within 12 hours the following day. So It's been a bit of a consolidation week over the last week. Solana had problems last week. We've had problems with the nodes and servers and people missing some assets here and there. So the team is working very heavily on that. You can see we're not pushing out content and things like that. That's been important and it's good to get the game back to the basics. So it's, it's fit and it's working. We're onboarding so many new people. You want to make sure that experience is clean. But the um, best source of information if you people listening at the moment on Binance Live, jump into the Steppen Discord. Um, we've got several channels, multiple channels in different languages. There's three different channels. You've got the newbie beginners and then you've got the elite chats. Then there's also other channels for languages and, and multitude from there. Plenty of competitions, plenty of ways to win prizes for people coming into the ecosystem. Um, we are going to be giving away a lot of these Binance Genesis sneakers. So the number 5,001 to 10,000, they're going to be Genesis. So we're talking sneakers that will hit Genesis bonuses like we just had with the salt drops. But um, Gundiver, cheers for coming on stage soon. Um, we'll try and get you to be able to invite people to stage later on and stuff and manage the shows. But uh, you did well, man. I love it. Yeah, no, thanks for having us on. Yeah, it's exciting times ahead on the Binance chain. It's like what you said before, it's like levelling a new alt. So I'm excited by it. Agreed. It, it is. And uh, how are you going with that trainer? What level have you got that up to? <laughs> he just level three. Trying to get GST is a nightmare, isn't it? Um, the, the cooldown comes off soon, so I'll be able to get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I've got a trainer and I'll trade it over to Gundiver just to get started because he likes to walk his dog. So having that trainer, it's not yet common. Um, but it, it's when you're trading your shoes, you get that 24 hour cooldown. So um, no, it's exciting to play it with friends and, and um, definitely. Think of it more than just an earning application. Think of it as it's social fire and family as well. But once you start doing the energy and you actually start getting out and exercising after that one month, that four to six week mark, once you've done about two months, you really start to see the benefits of it. But um, yeah, thanks for coming on stage, everyone. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Did your mother for the